Good afternoon. It's kind of cold out here today, but not unbearable. That's probably around uh, 1.30, 2 o'clock in the afternoon right now. And we got a little bit of a project we're going to be doing, but I don't know how far I'm going to get along uh, on it because uh, it needs to be painted. Over here, I want to mount another security camera right on the corner of the building. And I want it facing uh, the uh, back stairs. I've already got one here that's been up there quite a number of years uh, that faces the back door also. But I want to uh, get a uh, better camera and mount that on the corner of the house. Down here in this corner, besides the, uh, the Simmons, which isn't all that great at night at all, it's, is uh, my other security camera here. Uh, all the wiring is inside the wall, and uh, it monitors the driveway, and it does a pretty, pretty good job. But what I want to do is to mount one right on the corner, face this way, so I can monitor the back door and the walkway down here. We used to have gutters, so that's never got taken off. But anyways, I can't put the camera out here um, because it's not going to get around the corner. It needs to be under cover. These cameras are weatherproof, not waterproof. Okay, so you have to read that carefully. So I can mount it right on the fascia board over here, but it needs to have a hood. So that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be building a hood for the camera. I showed you this. Uh, this is the one that came in the uh, uh, package that was ripped open. This is a, a Dawson. Claims 800 lines resolution. Whether it, that's true or not, I don't know. But anyways, this is not what you'd call a rain hood. It's there, but you know, you need something around the camera. It's kind of like hanging over a few inches and something to protect the sides. So when you get rain runoff and everything on the building and snow and stuff, it's not sitting on the camera. The camera's, in other words, we're making like a, almost like an eave, but it's a, it's a big hood. It, and speaking of hood, I added this 10-foot piece of gutter here, uh, and it's got a, a very noticeable down uh, slant to it. And the reason for that is the heavy rain we got, even though that's all siliconed on the air conditioner, uh, we got water coming in on the bottom from the heavy rain and the, the runoff from the roof because we used to have gutters on this place and we took them down because there's nothing but ice dams up there. This little one here shouldn't pose too much of a problem and all the water is gonna run down and out of the uh, end over here. I left the end open and that's the way I want it so it's gonna run right about in here, which is perfect. I did this installation about three years ago on this particular air conditioner. I've had another one in here uh, since we first got the mobile home, I put it in, but this is a redo, and this is the 15,000 BTU uh, Frigidaire, and it's all siliconed in around here and everything. There's no water coming in. There's condensation here, I don't know, but anyways, um, everything is sealed extra. I put more silicone in there, but when you get a heavy rain, you don't have uh, very much of an overhang at all. And so um, this is why I put this in here. And it's capped off at this end over here. It's capped right off. Um, so whatever comes in here, naturally you're going to get some water coming down here. That's not a problem. The main thing is to keep it off the air conditioner. The air conditioner is slanted, but somehow the water was getting running down heavy and it was down getting down in the bottom it wasn't getting in through the top it was getting down at the bottom there anyways getting back on this what i want to do is to design a, uh, a hood arrangement this camera will be mounted like this kind of on a downward slant and faced to, uh, in other words down the walkway so i can see anybody coming in the back door 
This has excellent night vision. I've already tried it out on on the uh, 65 foot uh, wire that I got uh, off of eBay, and uh, it works quite well. Uh, these video wires that they give you, these 60 foot, 50 foot, and 100 foot, they're really thin, but um, you know, you're only working with about six megacycles at the most video information. You're not putting RF through them. So uh, I don't notice any uh, degrading of the video information, whether I hook this directly to the television monitor or whether I run it through the uh, uh, 60 foot cord. It doesn't make any difference. It seems to be just fine. So we got to make up something. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to get some galvanized. Uh, I don't want to use too much of it because I do need it for the uh, front end uh, body work on the wheel well when I get to that next uh, next year. Well, what I want to do here is uh, obviously the camera is going to be mounted using this uh, bracket here. It's going to be mounted on the fascia board. Um, probably I have to turn this like that. Trying to work one-handed here until I get myself set up in the tripod. It'll be mounted on the fascia board like this. So what I need to do is to curve this, cut the length that I need, curve it, and um, have it so that this will be mounted to the fascia board, and then this will be added afterwards. And I'll have a flange on this so that I can screw this to the fascia board. What the fascia board is, it's, it's aluminum, but under there is wood. So you just screw right into it. And I'll mount it on the very, very end, on the corner, facing down this way towards the steps. And, and it'll be monitoring everything out that way. Now, I'm making it for this camera because this is the larger one. I have a, a, a slightly smaller one um, that I got at Harbor Freight. Now, Harbor Freight camera uh, has got very, very bad ratings. The colors are off, the grass is purple and everything else. And it was $29.99 and I got 25% off of that. But it came with 60 feet of wire and a uh, five volt, 500 milliampere. Uh, wall wart, which is this camera is about half as long as this one. Now I checked this out, and that Harbor Freight camera lit up my whole backyard with infrared at night vision. It was really good. The resolution is supposed to be 400 lines, but I doubt it is. So this is the one I'm probably going to use, but I'm also going to make this big enough to accommodate this camera or if I want to use the Harbor Freight one. The Harbor Freight has a six millimeter lens, which is probably going to be okay. This has a three millimeter or 3.6 or whatever millimeter lens, and that's more for wide angle. Anyways, we're going to make this thing, oh, I would say eight or nine inches. We'll cut it here, and then I'll, I'll fold, I'll bend it over. We're going to do 10 inches on this. damage and we'll cut that and this will be the um, change of plans my projects are ch in changing in a changing state at all times we're going to go 16 inches and I'm going to tell you why I'm going to go 16 I'm going to tell you why in a minute here And that is because I'm not using this. When I make the curve, I bend this up. See, this is um, this is ten and a half inches wide. This is the sheet metal I got from the sheet metal shop for the bodywork earlier this year that I made. Um, 
and I can get more of it if I use too much of it. But um, this way, this will give me enough curvature that I'll be able to make a side straight so I can screw it to the fascia board. I was originally going to have a little flange and screw it, but I think we'll just do it with a, with a side, cut it here, and we'll roll it. So it'll be round like this. It'll be flat on the fascia board side, but it'll be curved like this, coming down. So we're going to cut this now, and we'll come back on this video very shortly. Okay, the fascia board from the bottom of the drip edge, that's an added drip edge that I told the roofers I wanted installed because there was no drip edge on it. This was all one piece and only stuck out about a half inch. So it's five inches from the bottom of the drip edge to the bottom of the fascia board, which is actually all aluminum with wood underneath it. So we got to make the end flap, oh, maybe just a little bit less than that. Because I'm curving this, one side, as I said, is going to be flat against the fascia board and screwed in. So I said five inches, so we can do five inches or we could do four and a half. We don't want to be butted right up to the edge of that drip edge. I don't think it's going to be a problem with back up in there because that drip edge goes uh, well into the roofing underneath. And that aluminum fascia board you see there, that goes in, I've seen them when they were doing the roof, that goes in about three inches. That's all one piece. In other words, the drip edge went over the top of that under the shingling. So with that in mind, I would, I would ask Oom, I would ask Oom that, uh, we're talking five inches, we're going to do four and a half. Four and a half. Four and one and a half inches. And we'll, we'll bend that up four and a half inches. We'll bend that. Like that. that tells me I need to bend it. I'll just bend it down and we have a fantastic bending jig I'll take you over to it Okay, we don't need to be at a 90 because we're going to be curving this anyway, so we're going to do that. Let's make sure you can see what I'm doing here. We kind of like doing this freehand. As a matter of fact, I'm going to get something to try to make a curve with that. Hang on. Let's try this. Almost where I want it. No more. Hmm. All right, now of course you got to remember this is a lot bigger than the camera. And it's going to offer some protection for the camera, and it's probably bigger than I really need. 
but it's also going to enable me to get in there with the tools to mount this because I'll probably end up screwing this to the fascia board and screwing this camera to this and I need to get my tools in there to do that of course I have to unscrew the camera from here and just loosen these wing nuts and take this off if I can get a little more bending on that. That's just about good. I don't want it. Not perfect. Okay, folks. Now, as you're looking at this, this is upside down. Be like this normally. This cam would be mounted right here. We don't need a, too much of an overhang. As a matter of fact, if you get too much, it'll get in the way of the lens. Although the camera isn't going to be right up against here, it's going to be down like that. And you can see that on the viewfinder, I hope. I have an awful bad, awful bad habit of not getting you in, in camera view here. But you can see the camera's roughly in this area here. Matter of fact, I'm going to get the camera up as high as I can here and it'll be overhanging enough that'll keep the weather off it and we'll probably be about in this area here with about oh I don't know maybe maybe two inches overhang but that will enable me to make a back on this of uh, maybe three inches and this is the biggest camera i'm going to be putting in there let's just let's just experiment with that and see what we've got i uh, changed plans i'm going to i can't use this piece for anything anyway so i'm going to use this part because i'm not going to shorten the length of this by bending this over because you never know, some of the better quality cameras, if I ever can afford one late, at a later date, uh, are longer and bigger, and I want to have the housing necessary to accommodate that. Uh, the system I got, of course, is analog. The best quality cameras are digital, of course, with digital DVRs, and those are, those are a rich man's commodities. Okay. What I am going to do here, and I'm going to make sure that you can see, um, I have to make a contour. I have to draw the contour on the inside of this. And then notch it so that it fits on the inside of this, and then I can use it for fastening together. So the first thing I want to do is I want this down as low as I can so this point here up here and at the top uh, okay so need to start right here what we're going to do simply we gotta allow for a flange right here we gotta allow for a flange so we got to have some way of mounting it on the inside. So what I have to do is draw the contour on the inside here. All right. Now, if you see that, I always draw reference marks in there, as you can probably tell. So now, what I got to do, this is curved here, so I'm going to cut, oh, about a half inch, three quarters of an inch, all the way around and follow this line, but out here, and then I'll notch it. And this one I'll just bend up, and I'll get my Harbor Freight bending um, metal bender that I got there uh, earlier in the year. And I bought this at Harbor Freight, I think it was on sale. And uh, 
Harbor Freight's good for stuff that's not, you're not going to use it too hard. Now, I got a metal bender, but it's smaller, that I bought at Home Depot in a few years, quite a few years ago. Um, never really used this one, but it has the grips in here to hold the metal and everything, and it's perfect for making a bend like that. But before we can make this bend up, before we even do that, we got to draw the contour right here. This is where we're going to be cutting it. So we got to cut like that. And I'm going to cut that corner there. So that's what we're going to do now. I'm using the old yard sale Weiss. I have one that does curves too, but this would be all right, I think. Be careful. You'll put your eye out with that thing. I'm very careful with this stuff here. This is dangerous. You can get cut on it. What I do is I take this, put it in a tin can, and bang the tin can shut so nobody gets hurt on it, and I put it out to recycle. Now, now we can bend this up. And first of all, we gotta make sure we're doing it the right way now. Well, she's gotta be bent up. I've bent things the wrong direction before and usually have to do them over. The idea of that is that'll fit in, uh, goes down this one, it'll fit in like that. And in order to get these two to go together, I'll just put a bead of silicone on the inside. As a matter of fact, I got some gutter seal that I bought that's even better. It's made for downspouts and stuff. I used it to fasten the end cap on my gutter uh, that I showed you earlier in this video. So we're going to just cut that. We'll do this off camera here. We're trying to keep the videos down to a reasonable length here. All right, we got the, the heavy-duty weiss. These are the scissors that you want to use for cutting stuff like this. And I got to pick that up. And you got to be careful of this stuff because you get that in your shoes and you bring it in the house. And we did. I did that one time. And uh, either me and my wife or my son will be stepping on this, and there's no fun. It gets stuck in the carpet. Very dangerous. Okay, now, now we got to cut this part out. You know what? I think I can fold that up. I think I can fold that up. It won't be perfect. Yeah. either pop rivet or screw it or whatever in here and we'll seal it on the inside with silicone. It's not perfect. Nothing I do is perfect. But I'm certainly better at this kind of stuff than I am with that complicated software. Oh man, I'll tell you. I'm learning, but you know, I think I'm just too damn old to learn this stuff, you know. I'm too much of the old school. All right, I've been working off camera for a while here. I broke two and eighth inch bits at uh, Home Depot junk. The specials I bought last year. They're damn good. So I have to go up to the next size. Now these 
holes here are let's see. They're 564 I think. The next size up. I'm always, always breaking eight inch bits. The number you have reached, 911, has been changed to a non-published number. That's not bad. We'll just silicone. We look in here. We'll silicone in here. Well, we're going to put one right down where this uh, vice grip is here. We'll do that off camera. I rounded these corners off a little bit. Working in here. I can clean it up. Now I can't do anything today, but I was going to put the uh, as lightly sand this a very fine sandpaper. Put the uh, self-etching primer on this, and then paint this white. Uh, but before we do anything, we're going to put the silicone in. Normally, uh, you'd want to do the silicone paint it first, but we're going to only put the stuff on the inside here keep the water out. Like I said, these cameras are weatherproof, not waterproof. You know, when you read the descriptions, you know, you read it quick sometimes, you, you think it, it's waterproof, but it isn't. A sharp edge here. Okay, well, we got a gap in there I don't like. Because I tried to save every inch of metal, I couldn't get a piece wider than this because that big circle that was cut in that sheet metal, I couldn't get a bigger piece unless I cut some of the rest of it out, and I want to save that for the van. What I'm going to probably do, if I can push this down a little bit over here, so that when I put the uh, the gutter seal in here, all through here, it won't ooze out because I got to paint the outside of this. I don't care about the inside, but I want that to be white. So this goes against the flasher, the uh, fascia board, and the camera sits up in here like that. There's plenty. There's more than enough room, so it'll definitely keep the rain and the snow off the camera. All right, so we'll get the gutter seal out and start working on that. Okay, this is the uh, gutter seal. I kept it in the house so I could use it. Um, what I did here, temporarily put some duct tape in here after I pressed that down. So we don't have a gap in here because I don't want that stuff oozing out to the outside. After it sets up, I'll take this off because I want to paint this white on the outside. So we're going to do now is to cut this with the gutter seal and hopefully it didn't harden up. It feels like it's soft in there. It's gray. And this stuff is sets up really quick. That's with this sharp metal here I have to be careful that I don't pick up a metal splinter. I have to do everything on the inside because this, I believe, is silicone and also so. Be careful with this. I think I'm just about done for today. I got to can't do nothing until this sets up. I'll sand this good anyways to make sure, and then I'll take this duct tape off after. 
because that duct tape kind of holds that stuff together. I pushed it down anyways before I put the tape on. So that's the back side of it. And that'll be mounted on the, as you're looking at the house and the porch, let's say is over there where the tripod is. This will be mounted like this below the drip edge, probably about like that. And the camera will be mounted on this wall right here on the inside. That's all I'm gonna do today. That's my project for today, and I take advantage of it when it gets up to temperature where I can do something outside here. Oh, that's it. Thank you for watching. I'm gonna go put these things away now. And uh, we've got enough sheet metal here to do the wheel well, if not. I've got more anyways underneath the shed. But I can get another piece at the sheet metal shop next year because I want to do the wheel well. I don't think I'm going to even need that much to do the wheel well when that project starts in the uh, late spring of 2015. Provided I'm still alive and kicking. <laughs> Thanks for watching, folks. You have a good day.